another day, another trade, or two, or three. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is May 21st. It is Tuesday. Now, you all know what we do on this show. We focus in on a hot penny stock. A stock I find through the day as I'm trading penny stocks. I do this every day from bell to bell. I look for stocks under five bucks. And you know where I find them? Everywhere. They're on every single market. But I'm particularly looking for a stock that has heat. A stock that has potential to make us money. Because I got to share one with you at the end of the day in these videos. Well, I got one for us. Thank God. This is Syata Mobile, ticker S-Y-T-A. Now, this is an interesting stock to share with you. First off, I did find this stock by looking at the charts, which is where I find most of my hot penny stocks. But the chart did not jump out at me with obvious heat, but I did see the heat in there, and there's a lot of gains to be made with this play. I have got three targets I think she can hit, one after the other. One was at 15%, the next one was at 150%, and our third one is about 300%, and I think she can do it. And this is what's most curious. I think we can do it without a catalyst. I hope so, because we don't have one. There's no fresh news or fresh filings that are going to get this thing running. What we've got is a good company that's growing. Their revenues are increasing. And most importantly, they have got some serious backing by some of the biggest corporations in America. And I'm going to share that information with you. So, Syata finished the day at $2.40 roughly. She is up about 16.5%, a lot of aftermarket activity. Every time I glance over here, she just keeps climbing. We are now up about 34 cents today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. I personally prefer trading penny stocks on the major exchange over the OTC. First off, and most important, it's safer. There's more oversight. There's more rules up on the major exchange, keeping these companies in line. I get taken because there's nobody watching down on the OTC. Plus, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with OTC. It's free to trade on the major exchange. There's no transaction fees buying or selling your shares. And there's just a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. It's a better playground for absolute sure. So what is Syata Mobile all about? Well, we'll start here and jump on over to their website. The company is a TSX Venture Top 50 company. Syata Mobile is a leading global developer and provider of cellular communication systems for enterprise customers, specializing in connected vehicle products for professional fleets, marketed under Uden Seller brand. Syata's customers include cellular operators, commercial vehicle technology distributors, and fleets of all sizes in Canada, the United States, Europe, Australia, and the Middle East. And I did see some business being done in India as well as Israel as well. They just keep expanding into more and more countries. We're going to get the rest of our information over here at the company's website. This is Syata.net. Now, the company's got about five different products, and I briefly want to show them to you. Their number one product, the one they are selling like hotcakes, is their PTT, Push to Talk. The company is a business-to-business -business global developer and vendor of next-generation push-to-talk over cellular handsets and accessories. Our portfolio of rugged PTT handsets and accessories enables first responders and enterprise workers to instantly communicate over a nationwide cellular network of choice to increase situational awareness and save lives. This is like the radios that police have in their cars or on their uniforms. It's like walkie-talkies. Push to talk. All you got to do is push a button, talk, and let go. But unlike our old walkie-talkies, these are connected through our cellular services. Wherever our phones connect, this connects too. It also connects to the internet through Wi-Fi. So wherever you have service, you have this instant connectability to your network. It's got different channels. You could talk to just the management or you could talk to the employees. It sits in a cradle and recharges. This has got military grade hardware. They're expecting it to bounce around so it can take a beating. And it's cheaper to use than all the other options. Now this is where it gets exciting, folks. Look right here. I'm gonna enlarge that for you. 
These are their partners. AT&T, FirstNet, Verizon, T-Mobile, U.S. Cellular, Rogers, Bell, KPN, STC, and Telstra. And they've got more. They just got some more in the news. Now, this is what's most exciting. These aren't just partners providing service for these devices. No, they are selling the devices. All the devices I'm going to share with you, they are selling them. And here's the kicker. There's no competition. None of these cellular service companies have other push-to-talk products to sell. This is the only one. And because it's being sold to businesses, all these companies have sales teams that literally reach out to businesses and initiate a sales, try to upgrade them, sell them products. And since there's no competition here, it is a huge market. Last year, it was a $3 billion market. I think it's cresting $5 billion this year. They expect in the next couple of years, it to hit $10 billion. And when you're one of the front runners, the lion's share is going to go to you folks. Then they got a lot of other partners here as well that help them with other aspects of connectivity. But they've got other products as well. They've got one that's like a CB. It goes into the vehicle, it's constantly charged, you never have to worry about it, and of course, it's connected to all the other devices in your network. They've got one that goes one step further and incorporates the technology of screen media. It connects to the internet, it will connect to private workflows, so if you need diagrams or maps or pictures, that's all connected into it. This even has a phone, it comes with the phone attached to it. So it's, this has PTT, push to talk, telephones, internet. I mean, it's got everything and it's portable. You can carry this around as well. And since they're working with businesses, it just made sense for them to get into some of the security aspects of it, like monitoring. So they sell all these cameras for the property. They tilt and pivot and everything so you can see all the dark corners of your property. And then the last product they have is a simple product, but real important. Since their products are working on cellular service, you need to have strong cellular service. So like where I live, I'm lucky if I get two bars on my phone. That's the best we can do and most of the time it's down to one. Plug this in and it amplifies that signal, which is gonna be perfect for this product. So those are the products that the company's got. They are being sold by AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon. They are being pushed by how many distributors? I don't know how many distributors, how many sales uh, people are in all those different companies. Well, enough to cover the entire country. And that's what this company has is a sales force that's not even theirs. It is mixed in with all those companies selling their products aggressively to all of the businesses in this entire country. And they're in other countries as well. Woo! Sounds exciting to me. Do we really need a catalyst to get this chart running? All right, let's go take a look at the relative volume for the company now. So, that's the same button. Let's try this again. <laughs> you think it was the first time I was here. Relative volume over the last 30 days, she's been averaging about 230,000 shares a day. On the NASDAQ, that's under the radar, folks. Today, she was just approaching a million shares, which is almost four times her normal volume. It's an increase. That's what we're looking for. Share structure for Sciata, right. Okay, we it looks like we have a very low outstanding share count of 570,000 shares. And we did. The company did a reverse split, one in seven, I do believe it was. They were under 5 million shares. And this is where they were at. Well, just a little while ago, I think it was like a week or so, they did a $4 million public offering and they put 70 million more shares on the market. So we have got truly close to 71 million outstanding shares now. This was really pretty while it lasted, but they had to fix that. On the NASDAQ, there is a minimum requirement for the float. Like everything else, you cannot have less than a million shares, and it isn't gonna be any higher than the outstanding share count. So they were not meeting the criteria. They were out of compliance. And believe it or not, you can be kicked off of the major exchange for not having enough shares on the market. And all you got to do to fix it is have a public offering. So they haven't updated this yet, but we are all clear here. 
I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be any higher than 70 million. <laughs> It'll be close to it, but it won't be any higher. Market cap for the company. Well, that's going to be different too now, right? Um, the market cap is based on how many shares times the price. So you take that and that's what you end up with. Well, if we have 70 million shares and we got two and a half dollars up here, aren't we going to be looking at 140? Aren't we going to be looking to close to 200 million? 200 million, would, would that be right? It would be right. So that would be a pretty decent market cap. Go check out those financials for Sayada. All right, over the last four years, she's been working on keeping her revenue strong. She's had some ups and downs. Right now, she's on a high note at $8.2 million over the 2023. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And what's most important is her profits are growing. She has pulled in 2.6 million out of that 8.2, which is roughly 30%. Quarterly reports. Oh, we don't have any here. Ah, we do have one though. I pulled one up here so I could share it with you. Isn't that one? It is this one. This is their most recent quarterly report that came out and it is comparing this last quarter to the same quarter last year. Last year, we had $1.8 million in revenue. This year, we had 23 that is about a 36% increase in revenues, which is good. And they don't highlight it, but look at our profit margin. Our profit margin went from about 500,000 up to 863,000. You're looking at about 80% increase just in the profit margin. That's great. Then down here, I had noticed that operating expenses have dropped. It's not a lot, but every little bit adds up on the long run. So we dropped from 3.1 million down to 2.9 million. So their financials are getting better. Their revenues are increasing. They're taking gains at a stronger rate. Things are looking good financially. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. In the bank, we have got about $898,000. Total assets, about 15 and a half million. Total liabilities, oh yeah, we're down there. Under 6 million. So we have total stockholder equity as of this report of just under 10 million. And it could be a little bit better than that now. So it's not looking bad in that regard. Taking a look at our disclosures. All right, we've got a few over here. I do believe these correlate to news. This one has to do with the deal they just did. Uh, nope, that's the financials. All right, 6K is our financial. This one came out on the 14th. This has to do with the deal. They just did a $2.2 million deal selling those SD7s. I told you they are selling like hotcakes right now. On the 13th, another 6K um, consultancy agreement. So they're getting a consultant to come in and help them do whatever it is that they're doing. Uh-oh, I think I just closed the page I needed. Oh boy. No, I didn't. I still got it. And I think that's pretty much it. We've got one more 6K here. Let's check what this one says. They're quick to dive in and dive out, right? Seattle Mobile to showcase PTT solutions at Critical Communications World 2024, May 14th through 16th in Dubai. So that was a week ago. And that's great. They're out there showing off their technology. They didn't just wait for the electronics uh convention here in America. They're going everywhere. And this technology is hot. There are lots of people who are interested in it because it is cost efficient. That's the first bottom line. But the connectivity issues are minimal. I mean, they've got connectivity down to a pat with these things. And with push button, you're not having to dial a phone, log in, or text anybody. It's instant communication with who you want to talk to. All right, let's see now. Let's jump into that news. The news, we've got a lot to look at, but we're actually not going to dive into any of this news. We're only going to highlight it with the headlines. So I am back here at May 10th. Now there's more news. You can go back further if you like. This tells us about that $4 million public offering that I just mentioned to you. This fixed the problem of not having enough shares in the float. So now we got about 70 million more shares added. We got news on the 13th of May. 
Sciata Mobile's SD7 handset added to AT&T's FirstNet's free feature phone for life promotion. Now, I was trying to do some due diligence on this free feature phone for life. It wasn't as easy to do as I thought. But from what I've been able to gather, it's exactly what it sounds like. A free phone for life. If you drop your phone, break your phone, lose your phone, they replace your phone for life. Which has given this product a lot of extra value. Considering that people are out there in the workforce walking around with these in all sorts of situations. Another piece of news that came out on the 13th. Uh, it's the same piece of news. They're just telling us that they are opening up massive market opportunities because, as it tells us up here, AT&T has now got stocked status. They say this is their third major U.S. wireless carrier. Well, it is. You got T-Mobile, you got Verizon, and now you got AT&T. And AT&T has now got the merchandise to sell to their customers. Folks, it just doesn't get any better than that. They have all these sales agents working to sell their products to businesses without even having to pay them to do it. They're just earning their commissions as they normally would. That is an exciting prospect with this business. And as I said, they just had a deal for $2.2 million for these SD7s. They just had a big order come in. And they just reported, as I said, their revenue increase. They were up 30% year over year from last year on revenues, which is good. But what's most important is how much of it did you get to keep? Just because you got a million dollars, that's not impressive if you only kept 10. $10, right? So you want to keep as much as you can. Well, they have increased their profit margin by 80%. Looks like they're at about 30, 35%. But year over year, it increased over 80%. So that looks really good to me. I like all that this company's got going on right now, and I like the chart set up. That's what this is about. She has got a pattern on the chart, and she is setting up to finish and complete this pattern. And if she follows through, we could make some good gains, folks. Let's go take a look at that chart. So let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're going to take a look at Syata Mobile, ticker SYTA. And I've got this opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. And it's clear to see this, too, has been in a downtrend for the entire year. In more than half of the year, she was completely flat, not doing a whole lot. Now, our 52-week high and low, we can't fully trust. Our low bubble's correct. At the beginning of May, we hit a low of $1.86. But it tells us here that a year ago, we were at a high of $101. No way. No day. That's a blatant lie. How did it get there? It's because of that reverse stock split. They did a reverse stock split in November of 1 in 7. And normally, we would see a big green bar here showing the price going up seven times. Well, they don't do that anymore. They got a better idea. They give you a normal bar on that day, so you have no idea anything even happened. And then everything in the past, all the history, every single day, week, month, and year of the charts is changed and multiplied by the ratio of the split. So all the history behind November has been multiplied by seven. So this high bubble of $101 has to be divided by seven if you want to know what the true high was that day. It's ridiculous. So we're looking at something near $13 or something like that. So you can't trust any of the numbers from November back, but the charts themselves have not changed. All the bars are right, all the SMAs are correct, so we can trust that. Now what I like best about this chart is that volume explosion. Come on folks, that's a lot of volume that has just come into the picture compared to the rest of the year. Now let's come down to that six month, four hour view. All right, again, ignoring the high bubbles, they're not going to be accurate, but the chart is accurate. We got a serious downtrend here all the way to January, and that's when she just went flat. Now, she made some wimpy attempt here to try to break out, but you don't break out when your 200 is on a serious decline. You're just going to slip and fall. You're going to fall further than where you started from. Well, she started here, got up on that 200, tried to stay up there, fell. You can see she lost it right here and really tumbled the rest of the way. Then here in January, when the 200 got close, she didn't even try to break out. She's pretty much been floating underneath it all this time. 
Now, before I focus in on current times, I do want to grab one resistance here. This is a very strong one right about there. You can see this entire block of weight is sitting right on top of that support. Then we have some bangs, some pokes coming up to it. So this is a support and a resistance, and it's a very strong one just at about $4. That's my high target price right there. All right, let's zoom in on current activities. As you can see, she is in a downtrend. She's falling. She keeps trying to break through the 200, but she doesn't get anywhere, but she keeps trying. She is also hitting this strong resistance up here at the $4 mark. She keeps hitting that and then falling back down. Now we hit a low bubble here of $1.55. Again, she broke through the 200 and again she fell. Now what we've got going on here, folks, is a W. You see the down, up, down, and now picture right there the other side of the W. That is a pattern. Some people call it a double tap. It taps on the bottom twice. What you normally see is once this W is complete, once it gets right back up here to the same zone, which is around $3.10, the W runs. It's a winner, W for winner. Right at the end of the W, it'll just take off. And it works in reverse too. If you see a perfect M, M for murder, at the end of the M, it falls. We're not just talking a little, we're talking a lot. And the same with the W. We're not just talking about a little bit of run, we're talking about a lot. And what we've got going on here is when this W gets up to that 310, it just crossed the 200-day SMA. That's going to give it more power, more enthusiasm, and it could then easily run to this $4 mark. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my Fibonacci because I want some more supports and resistances and I'm going to poke this low bubble right here and I'm going to poke up here. Now what I'm looking for here is the halfway point of this big run from this low up before she came down and I'm going to grab my line and show you right where that halfway mark is right there. That is the 50% mark of that run. That is a perfect center, a perfect average, a perfect algorithm. The charts like to move towards these perfect areas. So right now, she is banging her head on that $2.48.49 and she is bouncing down to her 9-day SMA. She is trying to get on top of that 50 and once she does, she's going to push up. Now we've got another resistance up here at the top of the W. I'm going to draw one right there. That is at $3.20. I feel if she can get this W completed, and that's what she's doing, and I'm confident she's going to do it, she'll break through this bottom target here, push through, get up to this top of the W at the $3.22 mark, which is over the 200-day SMA. That'll give her more strength. The W and the 200 is going to push her hard up to this $4 mark, which is where she was hitting before. This is where she normally goes before she pulls back. She could break through it, but that's where I would pull out. That's where I would end my play right there, looking at these three targets. Our oscillators right now are all in recovery. Our PPO, that is pushing up. Our MACD is crossing over right now and climbing, and our RSI is coming off of the floor. It was down there at 29, pushing up to 48. It's still a little bit cool, but it is climbing. What we've also got here is a pattern on my PPO, percentage price oscillator, and my ADX. ADX is trend continuation. It's all about straight lines. When the line changes direction, your trend changes. Follow this straight up. You can see that's when the climb stopped and the downfall started. So every time the line changes, your trend changes. Well, right now, my blue line, PPO, is going up. My red line, my ADX, is going down, and they're spreading apart. Guaranteed, 100%. If they continue spreading, your price is climbing. As soon as either one of these lines change direction, any one of them, your climb has stopped. It doesn't mean it's falling. It just means it stopped climbing. So everything is looking really strong on our four-hour chart. It's coming down to our 20-day, one-hour chart. 
So she's going sideways here underneath our 200, pumps up to that strong resistance near $4, fell all the way back down to this low and then pumped up really hard. Now she is right at that strong resistance, that 50% mark of our FIB. I think she's gonna break through this folks. Now our 200 is right here. Everything is getting into line. Look at our oscillators. We just had a crossover on our PPO. We just crossed our signal line on our MACD and our RSI now is up to 59. Things are showing strength here, folks. Now let's come down to that five day, five minute because I think I saw another pattern here. I sure do. So there was our run. She was climbing, pushing up, and then she had this big drop down to this strong support. Now she broke that support and she's coming down to these other resistances. But what I see here, folks, is a cup and handle. Right here, she started to fall. We got a bowl. This bowl is coming up right to this same point, right? She's real close. And then she'll pull back. When it pulls back, it pulls back about one third to one fourth of this bowl's depth and then it will take off and you'll get another strong run. So between our cup and handle setup, our W winner setup, breaking the 200 on our one hour chart, I think this is gonna run. That's just my opinion. I'm not promising anything to anybody. So don't get mad if it doesn't play this way. But look at the chart yourself, see what you think and do your own due diligence. There's a lot more information about this company that I did not cover, but I like the fact that T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T are all selling, aggressively selling their push to talk product, which has no competition, zero. That is a huge market, folks. I'm excited, as you can tell. Do your own due diligence, you'll get excited too. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.